Hi there. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, if you're dialing in from South Asia. Welcome to the State of Telecoms in Asia briefing. Uh, super excited and thrilled uh, to be able to have this conversation with you on how telcos have fared as an industry in this region in 2022. What do we see as some of the predictions? Uh, discuss about 5G, the uptake of 5G, uh, where are we? and what, what are some of the overall best practices. So please do send your questions as I present. Uh, so I would be you know, able to actually interact with you, get some feedback and, uh, and, and relate better to what is most important uh, on top of mind for you guys. Yeah. So let's start with first overall the state of uh, telecommunications in uh, Asia and how well did the industry do? So what we have been doing over the last now three years or so is we have been taking stock of the top 37 or telcos in Asia Pacific and tracking their performance on a quarter by quarter basis. And you know the 2021 uh, you know telecom companies saw one of the best growth years. Uh, post the pandemic, we saw you know growth coming back to about 6.4 percent per year, and that was the highest in the previous five year. Uh, 10 years. So that is a good year for telecom companies. Now, subsequent to that, we have seen that telecom companies have maintained that growth momentum. So in 2022, growth was again closer to about you know, 6 and 6.4% uh, in 2022 as well. So we've seen some very, very good growth in 2022. As we look at 2023, we think that growth momentum uh, is going to continue. Now, why do we say that? And you know, we'll, we'll explain that a bit more as we look at the slides uh, moving forward. So firstly, you know, I talked about the top 37 telcos and we looked at their aggregate performance, how well have they done over the last uh, course of last 12 months, right? So clearly the Indian telcos, uh, both Bharti and Reliance in particular, have had spectacular growth. Uh, the growth for these companies have been coming on the back of a change in the tariffs, uh, the ARPU revisions that happened, and that has really helped improve their profitability, improve their overall growth. You know, for telcos that own about 300 plus million customers each, uh, you know, achieving a 17 percent growth year on year uh, is truly spectacular, and that that bodes well. Uh, you know, so it, it shows that telcos there is a you know there is enough uh, appetite um, by consumers for investment. Uh, in, in, in communication services. Now, other than them, we have seen, you know, even companies in, in China, for example, China Mobile or Starhub in Singapore, uh, you know, uh, Taiwan Mobile, across the board, you know, almost 90% of these, out of these 37 telcos, uh, only five of them saw a decline in, uh, in their year-on-year -year revenue. So overall, you know, in a way, you can say almost like the empire strikes back. Telecom companies have rediscovered their mojo and what it takes to, you know, actually drive some growth and acceleration uh, in the business. Now, these numbers are based on nine months of 2022 because that is the data that is available. The, the full year results are still being released by many of them, but we expect that trend to almost remain uh, consistent as we look at the as the full year uh, full year revenue. So now, uh, you know, if you look at the, uh, the EBITDA side, uh, while, you know, uh, the growth has been positive, uh, the EBITDA change has not been consistent across all the telcos because, you know, a lot of telecom companies have invested heavily uh, in CapEx and, uh, you know, overall, the, you know, while they have taken efforts to optimize their, uh, you know, OPEX significantly, uh, the full results are yet to be seen. So only 45% of the telcos have actually seen a, a positive EBITDA change. Now, the other trend that we see is that CapEx spending is beginning to slow down. So telcos have been really tightening up, uh, you know, managing their cash flows, managing their overall CapEx a lot more efficiently. Uh, moving forward, some of this may change because, you know, you have telcos, particularly in India, who have been a little bit more cautious, uh, are likely to spend, given that now, we expect 5G investments to gain momentum there. In the developed markets, however, uh, you know you see SoftBank and you see China Telecom and China Unicom and China Mobile and others. Overall, their uh, their investment cycle in the 5G environment is almost uh, uh, complete. So we see that 
uh, you know, the spending could uh, could slow down uh, moving forward as well, right? So what is really the secret of this growth? What is driving the growth? You know, clearly on one end you have uh, the data consumption. So you can see this, you know, I, we posted a poll uh, just about a couple of days ago. We said, uh, we asked you people, many of you people uh, participated in it. We asked you people, hey, which country has the highest data consumption per uh, user per month? And uh, it is no surprise, almost, you know, most of you people got that answer right. Uh, it is indeed India. Uh, the pricing for India has been very attractive and that combined with you know, the relatively not so accessible high-speed broadband connections at home, people have been, you know, using and consuming significant amounts of data uh, on their mobile devices. So India is uh, by far uh, uh, the leader uh, among many countries in, in terms of, you know, per capita consumption of data. Now, a, a few days ago, I also did another poll. You know, I asked people, uh, uh, hey, you know, would you, as a consumer, pay a premium of 30% if a telco guarantees high-speed 5G access. Okay? Uh, for telecom companies, historically, uh, we have always competed very, very aggressively on price. Okay? Uh, and you know, the response is uh, a fairly you know, large, while you can argue 69% of people have said, oh, you know, no, I will, I will not pay. But I see that the 31% of people have said they're willing to pay a premium of up to 30% uh, if, uh, if, you know, if the telcos can provide me uh, a good, uh, uh, you know, good overall high-speed internet access, right? So, uh, so, you know, uh, so overall we can see that uh, the momentum, uh, you know, is there and there is a potential, there is a latent demand. And there were some very interesting comments associated with this particular question when I posed, they said, hey, you know what, I would be willing to pay more, but just that you know, telcos will only promise they will not deliver. So the element of trust on what the telcos can deliver, I think we really have to improve that significantly moving forward because telcos have not been able to deliver on the experience, uh, not been able to be consistently you know, uh, deliver what they have committed. Now, I, I see some good comments coming in to see how telcos have done with uh, return on invested capital. Uh, there has not been much, uh, yeah, that is true. There has not been much uh, uh, smart money or venture capital money uh, flowing in, uh, you know. Uh, I think good good, good question, Ankur. Uh, I, I, we did not include that analysis and I will make sure that, you know, maybe we will we will cover that uh, in, in future, uh, in the future briefings uh, in terms of return on invested capital. Now, Let's look at what has been the driver for this 6.5% growth in the industry, you know, and, and why we believe that this growth is likely to stay moving forward. So uh, one big chunk is that the enterprise business, you know, we all have discussed and we have, you know, we have mentioned it several times that uh, 5G in particular will be driven, uh, you know, significantly by the enterprise business. And, and the telecom companies, you know, even in markets where 5G is still not as pervasive. Uh, telecom companies have invested heavily in building their enterprise business capabilities. Many of them have gone ahead and acquired uh, enterprise businesses uh, to strengthen their entire portfolio. So today now, uh, enterprise business on average in 2022 uh, is about 20% uh, of the total business. And we see that the enterprise business contribution to total uh, revenues is increasing by maybe about a percentage point uh, every year. Yeah, so so that has been one good uh, overall growth engine. And there are some outliers uh, who are even growing, you know, even more uh, spectacularly well. And we will we will cover that. Uh, but the other engine, the other key engine for growth for uh, telcos has been the non-connectivity piece. Right. So uh, you know. Connectivity can only get you this far, uh, and you know the price competition is very intense on connectivity. So telcos have been building their portfolio of non-connectivity services, and you can see the likes of Taiwan Mobile. Now that is a that is an extreme case because they have a significant uh, e-commerce revenue. Uh, they are you know uh, almost in excess of you know they are closer to you know almost 65 percent of the revenues for Taiwan Mobile is coming from e-commerce. But you can see a good spectrum of other companies, the likes of Starhub, 
uh, startups growth in particular in the last few years has driven by their investments in the enterprise business. The likes of LG U plus smart bank, sorry, uh, SoftBank, uh, NTT, Docomo, their growth has come on the back of non-connectivity uh, businesses where they have you know, built in the advanced portfolio of streaming services, particularly in countries like you know, Korea, uh, you have seen that come into play. Uh, for many of the other companies, it's largely uh, their enterprise business portfolio. Right. So as we look into the future, I uh, we forecast uh, Twimbit forecast that you know the non-connectivity piece, let's say in 2023, is likely to now go closer to 23% this year. By 2025, we expect the non-connectivity to account for as high as uh, as high as 30% of the total revenue. And while the the key pillar within the non-connectivity business is the enterprise business. So while enterprise accounts for 20% of the total, almost half of the enterprise business is coming from non-connectivity today. And we expect that percentage to uh, continue to grow uh, moving forward, right? So uh, we talked briefly about the, the successes, a couple of companies that did extremely well. Uh, Startup in particular, you can see, uh, you know, they made some good acquisitions. Uh, they have really invested heavily in building their cybersecurity uh, portfolio. Uh, and, you know, under this leadership of uh, Nikhil, you know, who's been the CEO now there for a couple of years, uh, he's been pretty ambitious about driving the growth. And it's focus on the three C's, you know, cybersecurity, cloud and connectivity uh, is beginning to, to pay off extremely well. Uh, then you have the likes of Taiwan Mobile, where, you know, uh, in 2021, it was about 59%. By 2022, we expect it to have closed closer to 62%. Uh, and But that's really an exception uh, where you know they they really managed to drive their growth based on the overall success uh, associated with their e-commerce uh, play let's let's pivot briefly uh, to look at what's happening in uh, you know the uh, the 5g space yeah so uh, korea by far has the highest uh, penetration uh, you know as percentage of total in terms of you know uh, 5g customers at 24.6 and you know china is also uh, very high but China, there is a there is a definitional issue. Uh, in China, many of the telcos uh, position uh, as 5G package uh, customers. So the consumers may not necessarily be consuming uh, full 5G services, uh, but you know they do opt for that premium service. They want that higher speed. They want the unlimited or the extended amounts of data that comes with the 5G package, and therefore they classify them as 5G customers. So uh, there's about 1.2 billion 5G customers. As you can see, a significant percentage of that is in, uh, is in China. Uh, the other countries are still relatively small. Uh, but you know, as we look in, into the future, we expect by 2026, the number to you know, cross in excess of 2.1 billion. Uh, and you can see that green curve, uh, which is coming, which is largely the growth of India and how uh, you know, 5G introduction in India uh, will begin to have a, a good impact on the uh, overall services. So uh, in the early years of 5G, we managed to see that in many markets, telcos actually managed to even achieve a slight improvement uh, in their overall ARPU uh, in the last uh, uh, last you know, few years. Uh, but you know that that improvement in ARPU with 5G has kind of you know stabilized. Uh, the good news is uh, the use of 5G, they have been able to stabilize the ARPU rather than uh, see a decline in the ARPU, uh, you know, uh, moving uh, in the last year or so. So uh, now we move on to, you know, what what is often referred to the the biggest growth engine for 5G, uh, which is uh, really the enterprise business. And you know, we regard China Mobile as uh, one of the best uh, case studies of a telecom company really using 5G to drive growth uh, uh, for its own for its total revenues. You can see that the enterprise business uh, for China Mobile has grown by about 24% year on year. You know, only the first half data was available, but we have seen that that momentum is likely to uh, to continue. You can see the significant focus they are placing on uh, corporate customers. This includes a, a mix of large, mid, and small enterprises. You know, they added 2.3 million uh, new customers in the corporate customers just in 2021. 
uh, and we the new numbers are likely to you know stay almost pretty consistent uh, another 2.2 million number 2.2 million is expected now you can see how the emphasis on enterprise business has led to you can see their their cloud revenue is now you know, grew almost 93% year on year at 2.8 billion. Their data center business, overall ICT business, they are all pillars of strong growth. It's still very, very small percentage uh, of the overall business, but uh, you know, you can see the high growth rates that they are enjoying, uh, largely driven by the capacity building uh, and and the industry use cases. You know, uh, they have, as you can see, uh, there is uh, almost you know over. Uh, three to four thousand use cases uh, currently in play, and they vary across a diversity of different industries, right from mining to smart grids to smart factory to smart parks, hospitals, smart ports. Uh, uh, so, five G deployment has has really gained momentum. That bundled with their cloud offerings uh, have helped them drive and achieve uh, good growth in their uh, overall business. So now. Uh, another another trend that has uh, really taken shape uh, in recent years uh, is this uh, trend associated with uh, mergers. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know uh, uh, there are now three major mergers which are uh, in play or just uh, uh, happened. You know the first one to really take off was the Indosat uh, merger with uh, uh, Hutchison. Uh, so now the new entity Indosat or Edio Hutchison, I think, is a it's a great case study of a, a merger very well executed. You know, in, in previous mergers that we have seen, uh, the mergers were not executed that well. That led to, you know, the real goals and the aspirations of the merge, merger not being met fully. So Indosat has really proven it wrong. Uh, they have demonstrated that they can do it. Uh, you know, what is good is they also maintain the two distinct brands, unlike other companies trying to integrate the two brands together. Uh, they have maintained two distinct brands going to market, uh, you know, and uh, they in fact added six million new customers, uh, you know, in the year of the merger. Uh, with hundred million customers now, is one of the few operators in Asia with hundred million uh, hundred million customers in a single market. So, so you know, good work and congratulations to them. Now we have two other mergers coming into play this year. Uh, True with DTAC as well as Cellcom with uh, DG. Uh, I think you know uh, both will uh, the merge merger will give them that significant economies of scale, uh, which is becoming extremely critical given the uh, the extensive amount of investments that are required uh, in in capex and also to grow the grow the new parts of the business. Now uh, you know there are two other themes. You know in 2022 uh, we saw a number of telcos actually being attacked. Uh, cybersecurity has become a big, big challenge. You know, we had the likes of Optus and Singtel and almost every major telco has faced or had to face some form of a, a breach or a cybersecurity challenge uh, in, the, in the last year. So while it is a challenge for them, I think it is also an incredible opportunity. Uh, you know, we all understand how, uh, how big that challenge is for small businesses and large businesses. Telcos, by virtue of their extensive coverage and their existing relationships, uh, are in a very solid position to capitalize and, 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 and provide and grow the cybersecurity piece. So many of them have gone ahead, acquired assets. They are bundling these services together, uh, and we expect them to increasingly you know, uh, uh, you know, get a bigger share of this business. Now, uh, specifically from the uh, public cloud market, you know, the Asia-Pacific public cloud market uh, roughly estimated at about uh, 63 billion this year, expected to grow to over 90 billion uh, by 2027. Um, you know, uh, so there are three things at play with telcos. Yeah? One is uh, they are migrating their existing IT infrastructure and using the cloud uh, as much as possible. And you know, some of them are doing it, but maybe that pace of migrating or using IT infrastructure is uh, not as exciting. But definitely every telco is looking at participating in, in actually delivering and reselling uh, you know, the public cloud services from one of the top uh, three hyperscalers. They have formed that partnership to be able to do it. And then you have the likes of Rakuten and others who are really looking and put, have put their network on the cloud and they are now the, the poster child for it. And we will see uh, you know, many telcos uh, work towards it, but you know, clearly uh, nobody is close in, in terms of the pace and the momentum at which they are 
we are making that transition. Now, uh, we did a couple of other studies uh, in, in the last, uh, last uh, uh, you know, six months or so. Uh, we looked at, you know, there's been tremendous conversations around uh, ESG uh, and how, uh, you know, uh, it is becoming now uh, uh, an important measurement as well as stable stake for the boards of telecom companies. So we did a comprehensive study. We, we benchmarked the telcos across 15 parameters, looked at 45 parameters across the pillars of environment, society, and governance. And, uh, you know, you can, you know, we did some very detailed benchmarks. So you can see that SK Telecom was way ahead. Uh, they did extremely well. They had the highest performance with the score, uh, uh, an ESG score of 7.59. Uh, and then, uh, you know, followed by uh, Optus and Chungwa and others. Uh, the full detailed report is available on our platform. Uh, and you know, including case studies of individual companies and some of the remarkable initiatives that they have taken. You know, uh, companies like Chungwa Telecom have even gone ahead and developed some specific technology to help manage, uh, uh, you know, weather and the responses uh, uh, to the weather, uh, not just for itself but also to serve the larger community. So, telcos clearly have done a fairly good job. Uh, they have also. Uh, you know, looked at uh, inclusivity as one of the key pillars, and many many of them have invested significantly. I think Optus runs some really world class programs uh, in in enabling you know consumers to donate their data. Uh, I think there's some great best practices uh, there to look at as well. the The other major study, which I think is fairly interesting, is you know there is an inordinate amount of focus on customer experience. If, if you know uh, the amount of value that telcos deliver through connectivity, uh, you know far exceeds the price that they are charging in the market, and that's partly because of years of not you know focusing on delivering on the experience economy. Um, they have really focused on competing on price, uh, and and in many instances not living up to the expectations of the consumer. We think that there is a lot of un, untapped, un, latent demand. Uh, in trying to position and offer premium services correctly to customers, bundling it with other applications, et cetera. Uh, again, in this study, you can see that SK Telecom has done it extremely well. Uh, the Twinbit CX framework actually reviews four distinct pillars, uh, digital experience, service experience, employee experience, and brand experience. And uh, you know, SK Telecom, again, is a, a clear front runner uh, followed by NTT Docomo and, and KDDI. Uh, the others, uh, you know, in, include companies like Airtel who have also done uh, exceptionally well in the last uh, uh, 24 months uh, or so. So, uh, you know, I want to quickly try and conclude, uh, talk about uh, what we see as the top five CEO priorities of telecom companies in Asia. Uh, this is based on our conversations with uh, across, this, across the region. Um, so we see them as five different priorities. They're not ranked in order of importance. Uh, the first one really is, is the transition from, from, become, from a telco to becoming a tech for building that, uh, you know, uh, the, cap the digital capabilities, becoming a, you know, a digital first or a digital cloud native enterprise. Uh, the bringing in that agility so that it can help fuel the growth that they seek in their adjacency. Yeah? Uh, the second is the, the hunger and desire to grow the enterprise business. And even within the enterprise business, a large part of that growth is coming from the non-connectivity pieces. Yeah? Uh, uh, and you can see, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the non-connectivity services, which currently is at about 23 uh, odd percent, is expected to do about 30% by 2030. Uh, then you have uh, you know, the CapEx and OpEx in intensity. While telcos have done reasonably well over the last several years in optimizing their capex and opex, there is still exists significant amount of inefficiencies, uh, and therefore, you know, we believe that there will be continued emphasis to drive that opex and capex intensity. Some of the mergers will help set new benchmarks uh, in terms of cost efficiency and and serving customers. And finally, the, the relentless focus on customer experience. Within, within this conversation, we have seen uh, you know, many telcos move uh, to serve customers digitally on channels such as WhatsApp, et cetera, that has helped bring down the cost to serve. <coughs> many telcos in the region have launched uh, a second brand as a sub-brand. Uh, many of these sub-brands uh, you know, are 
uh, operating at significantly lower cost of acquiring customers, significantly lower cost to serve. Some of these learnings from working on these digital brands and adjacent brands are being plowed back uh, into the parent uh, brand itself. Uh, and, and you can see that is beginning to pay off. So that was a quick summary. Uh, I hope you know I, I was able to share with you uh, a good snapshot of what's happening in the region, how things are shaping. Uh, if there are some specific questions, you know, would would love to see uh, any questions that you have. Uh, please do. Uh, you know, if you don't have questions now, you would to share with us uh, uh, over LinkedIn or uh, over uh, email. Uh, feel free to write to us. I'll, I'll give it a couple of seconds to see if anybody is. Uh, uh, having any questions because there's always a, a three minute delay between uh, the presentation and what it shows up on, on, on LinkedIn Live. So so uh, let me see if there are any questions. Hey, thanks very much, Arwan. Good to, good to hear from you. Uh, Ankur, I think your feedback on return on capital deployed is, a, is an interesting one and we'll make sure that uh, we will we'll capture that and we, we'll share that with you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Fabulous. I think uh, I don't see anything else there. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining uh, this report in particular, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, the state of C uh, telecoms in Asia Pacific 2023 is available. It is free to download. It is a, a free version on our platform. So you're welcome to download it. Uh, there is also an associated quiz. You can consume it, enjoy it, test your level of knowledge associated with uh, telecommunications. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, in the coming weeks, we will discuss more about the state of CX, the state of uh, banking, uh, uh, and the state of uh, digital economies in, in this part of Asia. So appreciate everybody's time. Uh, wish you a great rest of the evening. Thank you.